Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Um, we were asked a question on our live stream the other night that I want to address in this video. And the question was about the boards behind me on this wall here. About, do we have a video about making this wall? And the question is yes and no. Uh, we shot up some footage while I was doing it because when I did this, this was kind of a not in a hurry thing. We, I think it took maybe, could have took up to two months to do it. Um, I'd come in one day if it was raining and I'd just come in here and I'd piddle around. I didn't really hit it hard. Uh, it's very time consuming to do this. Now the type of boards you see here on the wall back here, these are uh, white pine. They're one by eights. They, uh, have an inch and a half between each board. Um, I, I chose that distance because it just looked uh, it, it just looked a little bit more authentic than a little tiny seam across there. So what I done was I went ahead and installed all the boards. The, uh, the gap I want in between it. That's what I'm trying to determine. And I stained them. Now I stained them with a product called, uh, you probably can't see this on the camera, but it's called the light witch and it's called Arbor Coat. Uh, it's a low VOC uh, stain that uh, I chose. It's a water-based stain. I chose that because this room is kind of tiny and uh, I didn't want to hit a lot of heavy fumes in here or us doing as much footage and video shooting and all as we do in here. And plus, since in my house and I just didn't want all that in here so it's a very low VOC uh, stain. Now I pre-stained all the boards and I did that on purpose. First reason is if I, if I put the mortar in and then I try to stain the boards, the stain is going to get on the mortar. If I put the mortar in before I stain the boards then the, the mortar is going to stain the boards. So I decided to stain all the boards first. I learned that from watching uh, the guys on my construction jobs doing the um, painting and all for me and staining and different things like that. So once I had them all stained, the next thing I did was I come in with painter's tape and I taped uh, on each side, bottom and top of every seam on here. I went ahead and taped the whole room, got everything taped off, and then I I had purchased this wire I used in my greenhouse out there, this screen mesh. It has quarter inch squares in it. And I have a pretty good bit of it left over. So what I've done was, because I left an inch and a half between these seams and these seams here, I cut the wire like an inch and five eighths. And I did that so that when I pushed it in between the boards, it would, it would sink in a little bit like this and it would, uh, it would hold itself. But I, even at that, I took a few little drywall screws and we put them in between it just to make sure it stayed in place. Now, that is kind of time consuming because if you cut it an inch and a half and you stick it in and it just falls in between the two boards, it's not gonna do you any good. You gotta take it out. It's got to be held in place and kind of have that curvature to it like that so that the mortar can go through it. Now. Also on the back sides of these boards is plywood. If you're going to do this, you've got to have a backing behind this lumber. You can't just put this lumber on a wall and put the screen in between it because the screen will just push back. The screen's got to have plywood behind it. So there, there is plywood um, on here. Now, uh, I did not use some fancy chinking or whatever you want to call it. I used plain old mortar mix like I lay my blocks and my bricks and everything else with around the homestead here. I just used that same mortar mix and I did not mix it up in very big quantities. I had a little small, I don't know, maybe one, one pound pail, a little small bucket. I'd mix a little bit up with water and mix it until I got the consistency just like I wanted it. 
and I used a little spatula. You can pick them up at the uh, automotive shops, like for gasket scrapers and stuff like that. And they make them in plastic and they make them in metal. I had a plastic one and a metal one. Uh, I seemed to have better luck out of the metal one than I did the plastic one. But I would take that metal one and I would push it on an inch and a half wide. I would push that mortar in that wire and push it all the way deep in there until I got it all in. And then when I'd get a whole line done, I come back with a tablespoon, just like you eat supper with. I took the back side of it and I would run it up and down that seam and get it kind of smooth as much as I could and kind of sunk in a little bit. And then I would wait and right before it dried, I had a little small soft bristle brush. I would just like go through there and, and I would brush it lightly and get rid of any of the uh, spoon marks or anything like that and have that little bit of a sunk in look to it. So right before the mortar completely dried, I pulled the painter's tape off because you don't want to let it completely dry and pull the tape off because then you'll flake your mortar out. Or it's just like when you're painting, you don't ever want to let your paint completely dry before you pull your tape off because it'll peel the paint or chip it or whatever. The same principle applied with this. Uh, right before the mortar completely dried, I pulled it off while it's still a little bit damp, and then I brushed it after that. Got a little ahead of myself. Uh, and once, once we did all that, we let it dry for the two weeks like I was talking about, and we used uh, a clear coat over it. It's anyway, it called Arbor Coat. Uh, they make a clear coat, it's low VOC. We came in with a little sponge brush, uh, I think it was an inch and a half wide sponge brush, and just clear coated all of it really good. We put like, I think it was, we put one coat on, let it dry, sanded it, put another coat on, let it dry, sanded it, and then we put the final coat on it. And guys, this is the end results. Now, would I do this in my cabin? I would love to do this in my cabin. Uh, it, it's just, it would, I really would like it in the cabin, to be honest. It's just that it is so time consuming. I don't know if I get tired of doing it before I finish the job. In other words, you know, I don't know if I have the stamina and the want to to stay there that long because it's kind of slow. If you're one of these kind of people that's impatient, this is not for you. Uh, it's, it's, it is a, a slow process. You have to do it in stages, you know, and, and it turns out quite nice, I think. It, it looks pretty authentic. I would recommend it for someone if you really like, to, if you like to have it. Uh, it's not that it's hard. It's just very time consuming and it's very detailed every little aspect of it and it's also expensive because that tape was like 11 to 15 dollars a roll and i used a lot of that i used almost a whole roll just on this and now the mortar went a long way uh the lumber's kind of expensive the stain's not that expensive but the, it's the time and the process that, that it takes to do it uh, that makes it so expensive to do but guys, look, the end results is pretty authentic looking, and I kind of like it. Um, and thank you for the for the one that asked the question because it made Wanda and I realize we really hadn't done this video. We did shoot a few clips, as you've seen. I hope you know that it looked out that it worked out all right while I was talking. That you'd be able to see the different clips, and you know, I, I would recommend it to if someone wanted to do it. Uh, I think it can be done. It's not that it's that hard. It's just time consuming. So, once again, thank you for the one who asked the question on our live stream. It made us go dig back through our files and hunt out the, hunt out the clips. I realize that we did let them slip through our fingers, which we have lots of things that do that. And it's not that we don't want to show a lot of things. It's just that we have so much that we video every day that so many things slide through our fingers and never get used and that we just end up with them on an external hard drive and then we realize they're dated and you can't really use some things that are dated you can't talk about planting green beans in the middle of winter when you realize oh there's clips on green beans we didn't put up or something you know uh, but this wasn't dated this is not time sensitive or anything like that it's just a construction project, and I'm really into construction projects. Um, I really love those things because that's 
my baby is doing construction. So guys, once again, thank you from Deep South Homestead. and Thank you for watching us.